Well, hello there, friends. Boy, I got something special for you today. I created a dish with two of my favorite ones. I put them together, and I created this fantastic dish that I know you're going to love. Wait until you see it. It's, I know you're going to like it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring that bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're making something real special for you today. Okay, friends, I had an epiphany the other day in the shower. You know, I got my best idea in the shower. Um, and you know, I love onion soup and I love beef stew. And I said, wow, why don't I marry those two together and create a caramelized onion beef stew? Uh, onion soup and, and, and beef stew together. Everything I put in the beef stew, I'm going to put it in there. And everything I put it in onion soup, I'm going to put it in there. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do a, a uh, caramelized onion beef stew. My friends, I got chuck roast. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put salt and pepper in a chuck roast. All right. And then we're going to saute it. And we're going to get a caramelized. We're going to get some uh, uh, Maya reaction. I got clarified butter down there, my friends. Clarified butter. Make sure that's what you do. Oh, if you don't have clarified butter... I know a lot of you forget to do the clarified butter, but if you have clarified butter, my friends, if you don't, you use it because you know clarified butter's got a higher smoke point, and uh, and and no much touching down there. Okay, we want to create the Maya reaction, so we're going to do this in batches. The Maya reaction, caramelization of the protein. Okay, and uh, and so you don't want to put too many of them together. Crowding, no crowding. Do it in batches. You do a little bit, you take it out, you put a little more, you take it out. And, and then everything's got to be beautiful golden brown because we're going to need that caramelization. Because the minute you put the stew and the wine and all that, you can't do the caramelization anymore and you miss the opportunity to create flavor. Okay, for those who are new to the channel, welcome. I always like to welcome the new people, the new subscribers. Thank you for coming. Friends, this channel, we love butter. <laughs> And we cook with clarified butter when it's needed because clarified butter uh, doesn't have the milk protein that regular butter has. So regular butter burns. That's why you use clarified butter. If you don't have clarified butter, use a, a good cooking oil. Eh? Now we got onion. We're going to caramelize the onion. Same deal. We're going to caramelize them really, really dark. And we're going to finish cooking them. We're going to finish cooking them in the stew. All right, so I couldn't remember, how did I cut them? You know this, look, they're little strips. How did I cut it? How did I do it? I cut them in half this way, and then broom, like this. And then that's how I got little strips. You don't want them to be too long, otherwise they're going to hang out on your fork. It's no good, right? So we're going to caramelize them, make sure they're beautiful caramelized. We're going to do the caramelization of the beef the same. And then after this, friends, we're going to put leeks. Leeks, and you, and you notice I got leeks, the little strips, same deal, right? So what I do, I cut those in half, boom, and I cut them like this, boom, 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 boom. Okay, boom, 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 boom. And you see, cut them in half, and then, broom, and then you have little strips. Then you want to rinse them really good, my friends, because they're full of sand, okay? You want to rinse them really, really good in water, run the water through, right? So I got the leeks, we're going to do the same, we're going to saute the leeks as well. And then we got shallots. Shallots, same deal. Look how big those shallots are. So it's three onions. I put the three onions in my onion soup. I put in the three onions in the beef stew. Eh? And then I did the same thing. Cut the shallots in half. And then boom, boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom again. Eh? So now we're going to saute those together. All right? So now let me see how we're doing here. Oh, you know what? I didn't do it high enough. Sometimes I wonder by myself. I wonder. I, I was not, oh, no, no, you know, not enough caramelization here. I got to wait. Somehow, you know, when I talk to you, I'm always concerned I don't want to burn anything. And so, see, see right here, friends? Now, it's interesting, because when you make a caramelized onion, you get them golden brown, and then you steam them. Because right now, you can get them all golden brown. It doesn't mean they cook. It's okay, because they're going to get beautiful golden brown, and I'm going to cook them in the stew. Okay, same deal I do the onion soup. I caramelize them, and then I cook them in the stew. 
Beast too, same deal. Okay, so we want to make sure we got some harmonization in here, and we don't have it yet. See what right here, right here, my friends. You see right here? This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this beautiful caramelization. This is what we call the Mayao reaction. All right? So, friends, I don't want to make the video too long. You take your time. This is when you do this recipe, friends. You take a glass of wine. You relax. Okay? Oh, you stay over there. Not caramelized enough. I want beautiful caramelization on all the beets. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And then right there... I'm gonna do the same with the onion, and then I'm gonna do the same with the leeks, and same with the shallots, and I'm gonna put the whole thing together. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes when I got all my meat caramelized, okay? Okay, friends, the onion, I caramelized them. I'm gonna put them on a plate. Got it right there. And then I wanna do the, uh, a little bit of the shallots. And um, and the leeks, I'm gonna saute this a little bit, so I put just a little bit more clarified butter. It's gonna be good with all the butter. And then we got the leeks and the shallot. Now those don't require as much caramelization, folks, at the onion. All right, we're just gonna saute them a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna put the mushrooms. The mushroom, I cut them in, um, for the big one, I cut them in quarters. Uh, or in six or in eight, depends how big they are. So I got a little thing, and I'm going to saute those. I'm going to saute them in the same pan. I want to get rid of the water. How do I get rid of the water? Put a little salt in there. That'll help us, friends. All right, so we're going to saute the, uh, the so far, and we'll put a little salt on the leeks as well, and a little pepper in there. So we're going to continue sauteing this. I just wanted to show you the steps, friends, so you don't miss any of it, eh? So let me tell you, if you don't have the leeks, and uh, if you don't have the leeks and the and the and the, the shallots, you can just do it with onion. It's fine, okay? We're gonna saute those mushroom friends until they release their water, and then we'll come back. We're gonna put the oh, we're gonna put the whole thing together, okay, friends? I'll be back in a minute. Okay, friends, a little prep. But you got to take your time. You want to caramelize the meat. You want to caramelize the onion. Uh, and, and then you put it all together. And then pff, one, two, three, you can relax. Go take a nap. <laughs> Depends what meat you're using. It could take a good two, two hours. Eh? Two, two and a half hours. I'll let you know exactly how much that chuck rolls do. Uh, so we got the meat. And we're, we're going to put everything in a pot. Let me see. The pot on? No. It's better, better if you take the pot, turn the pot on. <laughs> All it is really, friends, is a prep is just to saute everything to get some nice caramelization. So we're gonna put the meat and the juices. Alright, meat and the juices. Then we're gonna put the the onion, the shallots, and the leeks on top of it. Okay. Now you can do everything in one pot. If you got one big pot, you take it out in batches. You know, take it out in batches, friends. And we'll put the mushrooms. Then I've released all of their waters. Then we're gonna put celery, then we're cutting small pieces, eh? Boom. And we're gonna put carrots, then we did, we used the roll cut to do those. You can do little slices of carrots, doesn't matter how you do it. Don't make them too big, otherwise they're never gonna cook, eh? Oh, stay over there, you. And for the roll cut, you wanna know how to do this little cut right there? It's kinda cool. You use the video right there. We'll show you how to do it in the, uh, uh, right? In the video uh, when we cut all the vegetables. Now, we'll put some garlic cloves. You don't need to chop up the garlic, friends. The cloves, you know, when you poach garlic, that's my favorite. When you poach it, it becomes very mild. It's kind of like roasting it. Put as little or as much as you want, really, friends. It's up to you. Now, in the onion soup, I put in uh, um, a fresh thyme. No, I don't know if I put in fresh thyme in my onion soup that I did on the air, but I have fresh thyme here. And then I got a little sherry, little sherry. You don't have to put sherry if you don't drink wine. I highly recommend you start, though. <laughs> little port wine as well. Port wine is one of those fortified wines that we don't need to reduce. 
I always have that question, why don't you reduce it? Why are you reducing wine when you think about it? What's the purpose of reducing wine? To get rid of the alcohol and to soften the wine and to make it nice and smooth and sometimes sweet. Fortified wine is already sweet and, 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 uh, and we don't need to reduce it. It's really that simple. All right now, friends, we're putting beef stock in here. Look how beautiful my beef stock is. Look how beautiful that is. The recipes are there also if you want to make it. Remember, you don't have to start from scratch. You can buy a, um, uh, I'm putting enough beef stock to cover it, friends. You see, cover it. All right, to cover the whole thing. Now, if you don't have beef stock, you can buy beef broth. And also in the onion soup, friends, I put two, the chicken stock and the beef stock. You can do the two or you can just stick to the beef stock. It's up to you. I'm gonna do the two of them because that was my epiphany to have both of them in there. All right, I'm putting less, much less chicken than beef. You can just stick it with one. All right, so, so far we got everything we need in here, friends. We got the garlic, we got the salt, we got the pepper, we got all the onion. We're gonna put a little parsley and we'll put a little more parsley toward the end. We're gonna bring this to boil. Go a little put a little more seasoning because my stock is not seasoned. And, uh, and, and we're gonna bring this to boil and then we're gonna reduce it. And we're gonna cook it very, very slowly. Bloop, 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 bloop. Not, 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 don't go out there crazy. Bring it to boil, friends. Bring it to boil. And the minute it's boiling, reduce it and let it cook slowly until the meat falls apart. It's really that simple. How long is it gonna take? Could take two and a half hours, depends the meat you have. Could take two hours, could take three hours. It's all based on the meat you have, my friends. All right? So, I forgot the very important element is to teach those of you that don't have a roux to put the flour. So I forgot it, so I'm gonna go get it. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna show you how to thicken this correctly, okay? Okay, friends. I just wanted to make sure I had a little extra stock because I want to make sure I show you these tricks. Now, for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you probably have the cooked roux right there. So if you have a cooked roux, you can put it in at the end. Because it's already cooked, you know, the flour, so you just go right ahead and you put it at the end. There'll be nothing wrong with that. But for those of you that don't have this, I highly recommend you watch that video that we did on it so you know what to do. Because right now, all I would have to do is put this at the end, get it to the right thickness, and I'm good. For those of you that don't have it, uh, there's nothing wrong with that because you just moved into the channel, friends, and you don't know about it. So if you don't have a cook crew, then you gotta put flour. But when you put flour at the end, like a lot of people do, no, don't do that. If you put it at the end, your, your beautiful onion stew is gonna taste like glue. And we don't want a glue, right? So we wanna put the flour now. How do you put the flour now? A lot of people go in there and put the flour now. Or they dilute it in water, water, no, no water. So you know what we do? We take a strainer, friends. We put it in there and we take a little flour right there and you take a little whisk and you whisk it in. Really not complicated, right? Look, and then look, look what happened. You see, friends? So if that's for you, then don't have the kukru. I recommend you do the kukru because if you do the kukru, kukru. <laughs> if you do the kukru, <laughs> we put our, I just knew in the channel, I said, that guy's a nut. That's okay. I'm your guy's nuts. Look, put a little roux in there. Hey, now be careful. Don't put too much flour. I'm demonstrating. I'm going to put too much. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Slow down, yo, so you don't burn my hand while I'm doing this. I just want to show you the technique, okay, guys? It's really simple, right? But you got to do this at the beginning. If you don't do that technique at the beginning, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The, um... The, the, your stew is going to taste like glue. I think I put too much. <laughs> you see? You're making me make mistake. <laughs> no, I, I think we'll be fine. Well, right now it looks like a lot, right? It looks like a lot. That's why you got stuck. Ready to go. But I'm good. See, look. No, no, no flour. No nut. No, uh, no, not, no nuts. No um, lump. Sometimes I get my word confused. People say, how long you been here? 50 years and you still can't speak English? I know. It's confusing sometimes. All right, look, look, guys. Now, I look like a 
I look like it's a little too much, but no. I think I just, look at this, it's already beautiful. It's already beautiful and I haven't even started cooking it yet. Imagine this, how amazing this is gonna be. And you know what I'm gonna make, friends? I'm gonna make, while, I, while this is cooking, I'm gonna make a beautiful mashed potatoes. I'm gonna make my Yukon Go mashed potatoes. There's a link out there somewhere. Okay, so look, now we're gonna cook this. Now, it should be perfect texture. If it's too thick, we're gonna add a little more stock. If it's too thin, we're gonna add a little more roux, a little more flour, but we're gonna let it cook. So we'll see you guys in about two and a half hours, two hours, when my mashed potatoes are ready and when I'm ready to serve this. This is gonna be amazing. It smells amazing already. We'll adjust the seasoning later. We'll just get it all together beautiful. I'll see you in a minute, okay? Well, I'm sorry to interrupt the show, but I just watched the video and I forgot to tell you, if you are going to do the flour at the beginning, which you should, uh, you got to be there and mix it every 10, 15 minutes, because if you don't, the flour is going to fall in the bottom. So if you don't have time to be in the kitchen every 10, 15 minutes and mix it for like the next two and a half hours, here's what you do. You put it toward the end, like at least a half hour, because you still got to give time for the flour to cook. All right, so as long as you do it, 20 minutes, before the end of the, the cooking time, when you see the meat is starting to get tender, as long as you do it then, and still stay with it though, for the last 20 minutes, otherwise you know it's gonna happen, it's gonna stick in the bottom. So be gentle and stay with it until the end. All right, let's go back to the show. Two hours later. All I can say, friends, is mission accomplished. The stew, that if you close your eyes, you think you're having onion soup and beef stew at the same time, which was really what I had imagined, uh, imagine, envision, envision, that's the word. It really is amazing. I, I'm telling you, uh, you know, I can't, it's just fascinating. Uh, you know, I, after 50 years in the kitchen, I don't get excited that much anymore. <laughs> I, I kind of do, but anyway. Um, uh, this was something that I had in my mind, and I'm telling you, the onion, okay, think about that. When you're making a soup, right? You're making an, a soup, you don't cook it for two and a half, three hours. You just don't. Stew you do because you want to tenderize the, the meat in your hand. So what happened is the onion literally disintegrated. They, they melted away, if you will. That's what happened. They melted away uh, while they, they, and they gave the, the, the stew an amazing texture. You can feel the onion in your mouth, but you don't see them. I'm telling you, it's amazing. So I made a little mashed potatoes. You know, I love mashed potatoes. And um, so I show you how I keep it when I have a dinner party. Put it in a bowl, you put it in a lasagna pan. You can uh, keep it warm like this, or you can pop it like this in the oven. Don't worry about the plastic film. It won't melt in the oven. Because you're not going to cook them at 400. You're going to cook them at 250 or something. Or you can put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes. It won't hurt. So I put a plastic, a plastic wrap you see on top of the bowl. But I also put some on top of the mashed potatoes. You see, look. Look, mashed potatoes. And this is the mashed potato that I make with the, with the garlic. I push the garlic in there. Jack is going to give you a link of it. It's amazing mashed potato, friends. I promise you. So you take your mashed potatoes and... Uh, I mean, that's the way I like to do it, you know. Do it however you want to do it, friends. And uh, you know, take a nice serving of mashed potatoes, and you put them in the middle like this, right? And it looks like a vanilla ice cream. And, um, and then you take your stew, which is amazing. I promise you, I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to it. And then I put it right in there, just like this. Of course, we can put a lot, you can put a little, put whatever you want, really. You know, it's, uh, it's really up to you, my friends, what you want to put in there how much you want to put in. And um, so far I haven't messed up in anything. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put a couple of more pieces of meat right there. And then you you know, you'll put some nice piece of carrots on top, make it look pretty and everything. And then what I like to do, I like to put a little bit of fresh parsley in there, just like that around it, right? And then, and then also, you know, I like to remind everybody, because I, I like to put the herbs that I put in here. So I put a parsley in there. And I go like this, really. And then, and then you guys uh, probably are wondering, uh, what, what's the crouton for? When you have an onion soup, you got a crouton. So you know what I did? I took some baguettes 
and uh, and uh, and and I put some uh, Gruyere cheese on it, Swiss cheese or mozzarella, whatever cheese you want in there, and you can serve it with a crouton or, or maybe two right there on the plate. And all of a sudden, let me get it a nice one. And all of a sudden, you got uh, all of a sudden it's not just a beef stew. And this, my friend, I'm telling you, it really is. I don't get excited too often, but man, this is like a holy moly mackerel. This is just amazing. I don't want to take too big of a piece. Of course, I'm taking a spoon to cut the beef, and then a, a huge piece is going to be there. And then I, I'm not going to be able to speak, but this is amazing. Oh. Mmm. 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 I'm telling you. Okay, stop eating, jump here. Mmm. I promise you, friends, you eat it and you test the, the texture of the onion that I'm going to melt on your tongue. It's just sexy. <laughs> I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Hey, thank you for watching and welcome to all the new subscribers. We love you guys. We love to, we'll see you very soon with another fantastic video. Thanks for watching. Man, this is good. Oh, this is really. Uh -uh. Oh, mmm. Boy, boy. Yeah, I'll leave you some, Jack. Don't worry. Mmm. <laughs> oh, man. It's delicious. Okay. Ah. Uh, mmm. 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 Okay. Stop eating. Mmm. Mmm. I'm gonna make a thumb there. Yes. Mmm. Oh man. It's really delicious. Mmm. We gotta do the next one in the summer. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Man, it's good.